Okay, so we're on to step two of the cable selection process for the level two learners and 8202 course. So we've got our two circuits here. You'll notice in the two different colors, the lighting circuit and the radio circuit. We've got our formula along here that we're gonna satisfy as we go and fill out these values as we calculate all of this and work it out. I've already inputted in here and here our design current, which we calculated previously in step one. And we're gonna input these values as we go and see how we go on with this and see how these circuits do through our process. So let's quickly remind ourselves what the parts of these process are. Our IB is our design current. That was step one, wasn't it? Our IN is the size of our protected device or the rated current of our protected device. IZ is the current carrying capacity of the cable in the installed conditions. And the IT is the tabulated value of the current carrying capacity of that cable. So let's say, let's take this for an example. Our IN has to be greater or equal to our IB, which is what we're saying is, is the protected device we choose has to have a rated current, which is greater or equal to our design current, obviously, because if we didn't, then it would operate this device all the time, wouldn't it? And when I say operate, I mean it would trip out this device. If we had a design current which was larger than this number, we'd trip this out, wouldn't we? So along this process, we've got to keep following this, these rules. Okay, so let's go to step two. Determine IM, select the size or current rating of our protective device. So what have we got here then? We've got this table in the middle, we'll go through this afterwards. Let's just look at these two circuits and select our devices. So we know, don't we, to start with that this is always true. This is part of our formula we just looked at and we just spoke about. So the rating of our protective device, our IN, has to be greater or equal to our design current. Right, okay. So in our case here, we know from that previous information we just looked at, that we're using for this circuit, we're using a 60898 circuit breaker. Okay, so we've got to decide the type from this table afterwards and we've got to decide the current rating now. So let's have a look. Okay, so 60898 circuit breakers, the manufacturers make these in preset values and you can get a 6 amp, you can get a 10 amp, you could get a 16 amp, you can see where I'm going, you can get a 20 amp, etc. etc. We've got to select the correct device. And all we do is base it on this, don't we? We know our design current, if we put a line here, we know our design current is 1.04 amps. So our protected device has got to be greater or equal to that number, hasn't it? Okay, so let's have a look. What have we got? What are options? Six amp looks like it's going to be the one, doesn't it? This one here, okay? So that's the next size up from our design current, and it's larger than this number. So let's write this in. There's six amps, and we're going to choose there. Okay, so what we can say down here is that our IM for this circuit is going to be a six amp circuit breaker. And let's come back to this in a minute when we choose the type. Okay, so this side, exactly the same thing again. We know that our design current here is 16 amps. We got that from the assumed load, didn't we? Uh, table that we looked at in step one. And we know the same again, our rating of our protected device we choose has got to be greater or equal to this number. On this side, we're using something which is similar but slightly different. We're using an RCBO, which is 61009. And these are made in preset values as well. Same values, 6 amp, 10 amp, 16 amp, etc, etc, keeps going. So we've got to do the same thing again, haven't we? There's a bit more to talk about on this circuit, but we're just going to go with this, for example. We're not going to choose a 16 amp, even though it is equal to this. We're going to go for a 20 amp, and that's basically because I'm saying to be on the safe side, we're supplying socket outlets with this circuit, aren't we? So I don't want to be on the breadline of 16 amps with the rated current of my device. I want to allow myself a little bit of room here with a 20 amp device that I'm going to select here, okay? And also, you're probably thinking, hang on, a minute ago we chose an A3 radial on the previous slide, on the previous step, step one. When we were choosing the, when we get in the assumed load, we chose an A3 radial, didn't we? And that already stipulated that if we're doing that, we have an assumed load of 16 amps on a 61009 RCBO. Our protected device, they're recommending we use a 20 amp. I just want to show you there how you'd actually go through the process of selecting it rather than just trusting what the table says. You can actually look at it yourself. Okay, let's now look at these tables in the middle and keep this quite brief. So let's look at it and try and work it out this table. So circuit breaker type in this column, the trip current. So, the how much, so this is where these particular circuit breakers will trip and then the application of them. So let's look at a type B here. So we're saying it's for a domestic and commercial installation having little or no switching surge. Okay, 
Let's look at a C type here. General use in commercial industrial installations where the use of fluorescent light in small motors can produce switching surges that would operate a type 1 or B circuit breaker. Right, okay, so what they're saying there is, is that these fluorescent lights or motors, when you switch them on and they first start up, there's a large current flow initially for when they first turn on. So that's why we'd select a circuit breaker, like a type C, which allows for those small, well, those large switching surges. A type B, it's saying, so in this bit where it said it'd operate a type one or type B, when it says operate, it means it'd trip it out essentially. So it's saying that if we had a type B circuit breaker and we were supplying fluorescent lighting, there's a high chance that when we switch it on, that switching surge is gonna trip this, this out. And let's write down why this is. So a type B, and this is based on this trip current section here. So a type B, let's write this and let's see. Let's use these two examples because that's what we spoke about. A type B, what we're saying here is it'll trip three to five times its rated current. Look, well, we're gonna go for the worst case scenario, five times the rated current here of the protected device. That's what'll make it trip. So what we're saying is if you've got a type B, it's gonna take five times the IN to trip it out. So it's gonna be five times on this side, it's gonna be five times 20 amps. That's where it's gonna trip, okay? A C type, we're gonna be 10 times the IM. Look on here, C type, five to 10, we'll go with this, the 10 times the rated current, right? Okay, so what we're saying is, it'll trip at 10 times 20 amps. Okay, so now we've gone through that, we have a basic understanding of that. You can revise that yourself and have a look through these tables and get an understanding of all types. But what we're gonna say in this situation, we're in a domestic, a domestic environment. So we're gonna select type B for both of these circuits. We're in a domestic setting. We'll do other examples, but we're gonna do for this example, we're gonna say we're gonna choose type B for this side and it's a 61009, okay? And it's gonna be 20 amps, okay? So that's this side complete. Over here, the only difference is we're using a 6098. So we're gonna go for a type B, 60898 and it's gonna be six amps, okay? Because like we said with the type, all we're supplying is LED lighting on this side and some socket outlets. So there's no large switching surges, it's a domestic environment, so we're going with type B, and we've selected the size of our devices there. Let's move on to step three now.